Welcome to the Speak Packed Podcast, where high performing speakers and the producers who hire them merge to give you the insider secrets to the lucrative speaking industry. Antonia Rose, your podcast host and celebrated speaker agent, unveils insider success strategies. Discover a nexus of thought leaders and bookers maximizing your potential in each and every episode. Your ticket to ultimate speaking success begins right here. Catch the transformative insights waiting for you on the Speak Packed podcast, hosted by the industry powerhouse herself, Antoniette Rose. Welcome, welcome back to Speak Packed. We have an industry veteran with us today. I'm super excited to share the insights that she's gonna bring to the table. Get your pens out, get ready for a heck of a ride. We've got Jackie Lappin in the room. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Antonia, I'm so glad to be here. Well, Jackie, you've been in this industry for several decades. I'll let you give a little bit of your background here in a moment, but I've been familiar with your company, Speakertunity, for several years now. It is an invaluable resource. We'll get to a little bit more about that later on in the show, but you really have a unique space in the marketplace and absolutely some unique and very vital, right, crucial tidbits for emerging speakers and those speakers who have made it, but really want to elevate and scale to that next level. So first and foremost, what brought you into this industry all those decades ago? (laughs) Well, it actually started when I was 11 years old, when I decided I wanted to be a sports writer. There were no women sports writers. And I was at the Detroit Free Press at 20, at the Associated Press and the front pages of the LA Times at 21 and um, at the Washington Post and co-hosting Dodger Dugout at 22. I went on to have one of the two largest sports special events cable TV PR agencies in America for 20 years. And I had a client list that included um, Toyota Motorsports and the National Hockey League and the Golf Channel and Showtime and and Top Rank Boxing and Ice Capades and Harlem Globetrotters that go on and on and on. It was a really world-class client list. Nice, real, real quick, did you mention the Dodgers? Yes, I was, was that, the, the Dodger dugout. Yeah, no. Okay, well, that was our team growing up. My favorite memories are going to the Dodgers games with my dad. But uh, that was in Anaheim. Are they still in Anaheim? No, that was Anyhow. the Angels. The Angels are in Anaheim. The Dodgers are, were in L.A. But in, yeah. Yes, L.A. Dodgers. Well, I just remember the, some of the, my greatest memories growing up were in there. So maybe you were in the dugout and I didn't even know it. <laughs> Not quite yet. That, was a, that wasn't until later. Um, but yes, yeah, so that was, uh, sports was my passion for a long time, but then the industry started to change, um, and it wasn't much fun anymore. And the big agencies were coming in chomping all the clients away. So I had written two books in personal growth. Um, and one of them was the best spiritual book of the year at the international new age trade show. When I got done with that, I realized that my heart lay with the people who were making the world a better place, people who were changing lives through their words in one shape or another. So I rebranded my company, Conscious Media Relations, and began doing radio podcast tours. And that's something we continue to do today, uh, where we offer leaders and experts um, and authors to uh, 9,000 podcasts and radio shows with a minimum guarantee of 30 interviews. So about five years into that, some of my clients came to me and said, can you book me for speaking gigs? I said, I don't want to do that but I know where they are. So why don't I just tell you? And so that's how the first speaker tunity product was born. Initially, it was just for the transformational leaders that I was working with. L- later, as we grew, it became for business leaders and um, new th- and th- thought leaders and just about everybody. But in the very beginning, uh, we p- created one specific tip sheet for that community. And then we continued to grow our product resources from there. What, how, what year did you fa- found or launch Speakertunity? Well, let's see, what's this? Is, I would say about 2014, something like that. Okay. All right. It's been about so, 10 years. 
What is the best bang for an emerging speaker's buck? Meaning, and 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 even established speakers who really want to take their career to the next level. There's so many places we can focus. We can focus on corporations, conferences, seminars, podcasts. There's just do you, you even have uh, TEDx resources. There's so many different areas that we could focus on that we could get kind of watered down and spread out where if you can give just some insights to where are where's the lowest hanging fruit to really start getting your voice out there and your brand built so for somebody who's just really starting out podcasts are a great way to get started the barrier to entry is relatively low um, you know, you have more than 2 million podcasts out there to choose from, and you're going to find some right in your niche. The other, the next one is virtual summits, provided you have a decent list that you can participate in collaboration. In other words, you're going to send to your list as well as other people sending to their list, which is going to grow your opt-in list and give you a showcase to present what you do and in your programs and your books and all of those other kinds of things. Um, so those two are the low hanging fruit from a standpoint of getting on stages. You want to look at local events, local meetings, things that happen on a regular basis. Now, let me give you one piece of advice. If you're intimidated and you're not ready yet to make that leap, when you go and you give a podcast host 20 questions that you want to be asked, that should be your roadmap to your signature speech. So by the time you've delivered it 20, 30, 40 times on a podcast, it is going to be way easier for you to get on stage and deliver that. I did that. I did 100 interviews after my last book. And as a result, by the time I hit the stage, I knew my sound bites. I knew I was confident in what I was saying. I knew what came next. So it's a great way to prepare yourself for starting to get on local stages and local, we're talking chambers of commerce, women's business meetings, uh, uh, business networking meetings, uh, <coughs> uh, special, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 the kinds of meetings that um, uh, are people are aligned, like health and wellness support groups and parenting groups and wherever your your avatar, your client meets. Find a local group and start working there and work out the kinks. Make sure your offer works if you're going to speak to sell as opposed or as I call uh, speak to enroll as opposed to getting paid to get on stages and speak to enrolling. The one thing that I would say about speaking to enroll is that there are way more opportunities to speak to enroll than there are to get paid. And as a result, if you are just starting out speaking to enroll, and by the way, you can make more money doing that if your offer is right um, than you can with a fixed amount of money you get paid on a paid stage. So I encourage you to build the repertoire so that you can um, you can speak on a stage that doesn't let you sell and only let you give a free gift, uh, you know, something that gets them to enroll in your opt in list. Uh, be have a speak to sell opportunity so you can take advantage of all those. And then lastly, be able to speak to a paid audience, a keynote. So if you have all three of those in your arsenal, you're going to be speaking in a lot of places. Yeah, I love your path. I love that you brought this up because so often new newer speakers, especially the less, maybe the less seasoned ones, right? They may have spent an entire lifetime as a, as a lead executive or um, just a real expert, uh, maybe a doctor practitioner, somebody who's really an expert in their field, ready to get, get their curated knowledge out to the public. I think that a lot of times because they're high achievers, they just believe I'm going to put my name out there and I'm going to get keynotes. But there really is a journey, and it's an important journey. And I love what you said about the the truth behind the monetization of speaking. So I do want to dive into that next. But first, to recap, if I'm understanding you, which it's really in line with with what I believe as well, you s start with podcasts, right? Especially targeted. Where else are you going to find people who are tuning in? 
to actually listen to what it is that you have to offer. And they go there because they're looking for your information. It's not a shot in the dark, like marketing or, or even, or even being on a, on a talk show. You really don't know who is going to be listening. But when it comes to podcasts, people tune in because they want that information on that subject matter. And, uh, last that I checked, um, it's 3.3 something million podcasts to date. Mm. That's a lot of opportunity. And obviously you can, there's ways to see how that podcast ranks. Um, but if you're in a niche market, even if it's not a high ranking podcast, you're still in front of the people who are most likely to take that next step with you. So such a, important. So the pathway that you gave was podcast to virtual, which is, which is a lot of fun. And you've got lists for that. Um, and then local, and then maybe associations, organizations, and then kind of those bigger keynotes. So sometimes you're just going to get lucky. And one of those comes earlier, but it's a, it's a, it, it's a definable path that is, is proven over and over. You don't have to re <laughs> redesign that. It works and it works every time. We call um, it the speaker's journey. The speaker's journey. So what I love, you know, that I'm a speaker agent, so it might seem like I'm, I'm actually um, talking against myself. But what I have found is those speakers that really make it that for the longevity and to those to that bigger impact and bigger revenue, they do lock arms with agents or bureaus, but they're out there putting in their own elbow grease every single day as well. They're not just sitting back waiting for that, for that call. Right. Um, yes. Talk to me, Jackie, about that. So we know all of those places you'll get impact. You're going to reach the people who need to hear what, what it is, the solutions that you have for them, right? The tactics, the, the tools, the strategies, that impact is going to get out there. For a speaker to be a long running speaker and have longevity in their field on the revenue side, they also need to be doing well. And you, you mentioned this, I would like to dive a little bit deeper into this. I agree with you 100% that that fixed host check, even if it's a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars check, that's going to be your lowest pay for the day, right? Your lowest pay for that opportunity, really where your bigger income and revenue is going to come from, are the people who discover you in those audiences and follow you beyond that one talk. Right, that one new client can become fifty thousand, seventy five thousand, a hundred thousand. You know, the lifetime journey that you have with that one person. And I, I do know to notice, especially with newer speakers, they're really short sighted on that, on that keynote check. Can you speak a little bit? Can we go a little bit deeper into that? So let's look at the numbers. Let's say that you have a two thousand dollar program, and you know that you can convert. 30% of the audience. And let's say that you know there are 300 people in an opportunity that you're going to be speaking at. So you know that you can convert 100 people. Times that 100 people to times that 2,000. You see how much more money you could make if yes. you are if you have the right offer in the right, right audience with the largest, and I, you don't have to have an audience of a hundred. I remember hearing a friend of mine, Doug Vermeeren, who was a major speaker, talk to me about the fact that he presented at a meeting that was, I think, 30, you know, 20,000 people. And the next day, and when it went to present to a room of 30 people, he way, made way more money in that room of 30 people than he did to that cavernous audience because yes. it was the right audience with the right offer. So, you know, it, it doesn't mean you have to be in front of a room full of 100, 200, 300, 5,000 people. It can be a small audience if it's the right audience. So, um, so, but the numbers themselves, if you know how much you can convert, and that's more of an experienced speaker, you've already done this a few times and you know with regularity what you can. And that also presents another issue. 
And that is a third, fourth kind of speaking that we really haven't talked about, which is pay to play. Because there are opportunities to pay to get on a stage. Um, and, and a leader expert is putting on an event and they say, come pay me $5,000 to, to, to speak on my stage. Now, the only reason you would do that is if you know how much you can convert, you know how big the audience is, and you know you're going to make way more money than that $5,000 you're going to invest. Um, and, you know, there, I know some people say, I'll never pay to get on a stage. But for the right people, it's the right search. I know people who only do pay to play because that's where they know where their money's coming from. So yes. you have to be in the right um, in the right uh, stage in your career and be an expert at speaking to enroll in order to do that. I've seen you actually practice exactly what you're preaching right now, where you have uh, if some conference that I was at or or some, maybe even a virtual event that I was at where you, uh, I, I happen to know the host and that you have to pay a good amount of dollars to be on that particular show. Um, and we've had conversations about how well that does for you, that you're it's pretty priceless to get in front of number one, to get in front of your right fit people. And number two, to be endorsed by the host that those people already know, like, and trust or else they wouldn't be there. So, so powerful. I know there's certain stages I would pay a lot of money to be on knowing that those having the bigger vision, right. Understanding the bigger picture that just, five clients, five new clients in that audience more than pays for that. And then the opportunities that that stem from that is just invaluable. You said something that is so spot on, Jackie, and that is the ability to connect with smaller audiences. It's always going to be more difficult to really grab the hearts and connect in a massive room. You can do it. And there's, there's definite ways and strategies to do that with a good um, guide to help you get to that place. But it's just going to naturally be easier to make stronger connections in, in smaller rooms and really taking a next step with you. A talk is just the first step in a journey. I love that you call it a speaker's journey to go on to a journey with you People really need to believe that you understand them and you have the solutions that they're looking for. It's a lot easier to do that in a, in a smaller room. Really, really quick, short story on that because I, I loved your story. So uh, last July, I spoke uh, in Florida at a, what was supposed to be a really huge conference. And the, the organizers did everything right except to get people there. <laughs> It was an amazing event, but it was supposed to have 8,500 people there. I, none of us saw a lanyard that didn't say sponsor, exhibitor, or speaker. <laughs> I just I don't know where the people were. Um, so instead of talking in front of thousands, um, I spoke in front of 10 people, three of which were my own speakers. <laughs> so basically, seven people. Um I walked away from that event from the audience checks because it was an unpaid event with regards to the host check with $33,000 and some really key relationships that have blossomed since then. I saw speakers m more brilliant, brilliant than me, right? More polished than me, more everything than me, but they didn't have the mindset, the uh, understanding that a small audience can be a really powerful audience, right? So they just kind of, I don't know, let it fall flat or didn't, didn't give that call to action in, in the strong, in stronger way. Sometimes they didn't give a call to action at all. So what a missed opportunity, even if it's a big room, small room, medium room, whatever it is, that you're always thinking about that audience member out there who is like, wow, you've really sparked something in me. What's the next step? And give them that next step. <laughs> Yep. I absolutely agree. Yes. So, um, do not, do not underestimate, underestimate the power of those smaller audiences, especially, um, when it's, 
when it's local and you can kind of be interactive with them, whether you're a newer speaker or a seasoned speaker, seasoned speakers really know this, that conversion that you talked about is so, so true. So there's paid by host opportunities. There's paid by audience opportunities, even if that's just through a gift that leads them to your down your journey. There's pay to play opportunities. What sort of blend do you practice for yourself and do you encourage others to show like so many podcasts a month? Like, do you have a, a little bit of a formula? I don't really have an, a specific intention. Um, a lot of stuff because I'm in, I, I'm in the business and I am a lot of things come to me so that I'm different than a lot of people who need to be out there looking for things. Uh, I'm constantly talking to JV partners who say, please come on my part podcast, please come d deliver my, you know, to my mastermind group. Um, but most people need to have actually a, um, a, a plan at, as you talk about, um, you know, uh, I'm definitely, I'm looking to get on this many podcasts a month. I, uh, I'm seeking to get at least one good speaking gig a, m a month. Um, I, um, I'm looking to, you know, at some people's virtual summits are right for them. Some aren't. Another factor is if you're looking to get on speaking gigs on conferences, is it virtual? Is it live or hybrid, which is a combination of both some small, some smaller group in the room and the rest online. I was in a conference this weekend that was just like that. There were about 25 of us in the room and there were another 35 online. And, uh, um, and so, um, you, you need to really uh, look at what your availability is and where the kinds of speaking gigs are that you want to want to do. Now, for example, um, not only are conferences live, virtual and hybrid, but a lot of times now meetings are. So I attended a meeting that um, I like a lot here in Southern California. It's a women's business group. Now, since the pandemic, they actually have a hybrid meeting. Now, we're not talking a lot of people. We're talking about maybe 30 th people, 25 people a week, um, a month. And of that, 10 or 12 are in, they do it in a bank, 10 or 12 are there in the bank community room, and the rest of them are on a giant screen. So, and everybody's interacting back and forth. So, you know, today's meetings can be live, virtual, or hybrid. So you might end up going, driving, you know, 20 miles to go to a network meeting. And sometimes that same national organization may not only have local meetings, but they may have a national virtual meeting that you can speak on mm. because they started it during the pandemic. And it was so effective bringing all the chapters together that they kept doing it. So, you know, there are infinite variations on where you can find your speaking gigs. The key to it is you have to keep looking or have somebody work with you to look for them. And you have to continue to pursue because if you sit around and wait for them to come, they generally won't. I happen to be talking to JV partners all the time and that makes sense, but most people are not in that situation. Yes. Oh gosh. So much gold in there, Jackie. So I, I love that you brought up the fact that, I mean, you're, you're several decades into this industry. You've built relationships. People under, know your name, right? So, but I'm sure at first it was a lot of this sort of forward motion, consistent, consistently following up with people, outreaching, outreaching, right? And you never stop that, but the intensity of it can relax a bit as, as now those opportunities are flowing inward. So but I when you, for yeah, one go thing ahead. is I attend a lot of virtual meetings where I am meeting new people. I am putting myself in places where I'm going to encounter the people who are my ideal partners, and my ideal clients. Oh, I love that. Go where your people gather like grapes, right? And you are a master at that because I see you at everything pretty much. Um, we've got a, a, a few years together under our belt just by the, the different places we've associated with. And uh, you could kind of sit back and relax a bit, but you don't, you can, you keep getting your face and your name out there. I will say the speaking space, the, the event space is very fickle, out of sight, out of mind, right? You just continually need to be making yourself known and keeping your face in, in, in the mix, right. And showing that you're still relevant. Yeah. So, 
let's say I've got the leads. I send out an email, make a phone call. Can I just sit back and, and wait to get that returned email or phone call? Like what's the magic sauce, right? The magic recipe from here's a place I'd like to speak to action. So I call it the rule of three. One phone call, two emails, two phone calls, one email. Mm. Um, you, and if you haven't heard from them then, then start reaching out on LinkedIn or Facebook or Messenger. More than likely, they're going to be on LinkedIn. And that's the way, next place. But if you haven't heard from them after five, all five of those, that's the time to call it quits. Unless it's a mega, mega thing that you really, really want it. And then I would continue to periodically put in, an, you know, a, a, um, a call. But, you know, it, sometimes it, it takes a lot of, you know, con connections to get to people. Uh, but I wouldn't hound them. Do not hound them. In most kind of cases, if, they, if you haven't heard from them fi after five times, it's time to move on. That's my formula. Yeah. Okay. I love that. So rule of three, one call and two emails or two emails and one call, and then you go to DM. That's a really interesting um, recipe. I like that. And then after five, relax on that. Um, what, what I would add is, especially if it's a bigger organization, you might be talking to the wrong person. So after five, maybe go to the next person, but don't splash that one organization with your hitting all the departments at once. Right. Try one, go to the next, go to the next, depending on the, the size of the organization and how much you really want to appear uh, in that event or, or boardroom, right? Whatever it might be. Tell me, uh, have you done this? I've been, I just started implementing this and it seems to be getting some really good traction, but it's just by, hmm, I'm going to try this. So I'd like, I'd like to know if you've been trying this. So if, when we get to the, about that five to seven mark, um, we, t we take a different approach. Like I'll, I'll gift them something like I'll make an introduction. Um, Hey, I was thinking about you. Here's this person. I felt like you might like to meet and I'll, I'll give them something. I might, invite them if they're the right fit to guest guest be a guest expert on the show i give them something and then all of a sudden my my email or or dms that have been falling on deaf ears gets some sort of response doesn't work every time but it seems to have had some effectiveness do you have you done any of anything along those lines i am very much a, a believer in giving first and getting it. so i i agree with you it's a great strategy but there's one other thing that's working very well for a lot of people as well and that's having um there's certain kinds of emails that you can embed a video in bomb bomb and you know uh, uh 360 connect and these different services that allow you to do that um uh, and so if you can embed an email to the host to the booker very specifically saying hey john or mary i would you know i would love to be on your event because i believe that i'm a perfect match and i speak on and i really believe in the mission of what your organization is you give them a personal message and then say please see my materials you know, below or attached and let's connect. That gets a, an, a much higher open rate and a much higher response rate. Um, it is the new hot thing and it's working for a lot of people. Now you can do that generically, you know, and not make it addressed to that specific person. And you can use the same one for a lot of people um, if you want. And there's some AI versions of that that you can actually do that and they will actually insert that person's name. Um, just a little secret. Um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, but so, you know, any of those ways will increase your open rate and the potential to have a conversation with the booker. I love that you brought that on uh, up. And I also love that it doesn't have to be an AI who's doing the whole presentation. It can just be, it can be you authentically doing the the introductory, you know, I don't know, one minute talk. Well, when I say AI, it's you. And all that AI does is change the name of the person. Yes, exactly. 
Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, I found that to be really, really powerful. So we were we part of the service that we do as an agency is get our clients. We're building their brand. We're getting their message out there, building their awareness, awareness of them. Right. And so we're getting them on top 5% podcasts. And there was just a dry season in there. I think it was January. And we're like, we've got to do something. So we, we had each of the speakers make what we call a pro clip, really quick clip. And when we're pitching that particular speaker for a particular show, um, we will insert that pro clip. And I've had numerous podcast hosts saying, you know, I get so many emails a day. And that one clip is what really kept my interest. I hadn't seen that happen before. That is, that's really what made the difference for me. So I love that tip beyond podcasts, right? To the actual host of a conference or executive of an HR department. Um, what should they focus on? Hey, I'm all that. I'm great at this. I've got experience in, or what kind of wording would really speak to that speaker book or the person in charge of making the decision? If you really know the audience and what they're suffering from, that, that should focus on how you solve the problem that they are facing. The booker, and that is the most important message you can give any booker in all of your materials, video, presentation letter, speaker one sheet, a number one message. Here is the problem that I solve for your audience. And if you can show them that there is an alignment with what their audience is really needing right now, that is the primary force for getting you in that door. I absolutely echo what you said. So it's not about you. It's not about this is why you want me. It's, it's what I bring to the table for your people. Right. Because really any speaker booker is really just worried about their, their job security. Right. They have a budget. They're not even, they don't even care to, to dicker you down to save money in the budget. Right. They're going to spend the whole budget, whatever that might be. Or for the host, they're going, they, they, they want to make sure that their audience is well served. So getting the right person into that room or onto that microphone is their number one goal. And if they're getting pitched by all different directions saying, Hey, I've got all of these accomplishments. I've spoken on TEDx, you know, whatever it is versus within a half hour, I can take your audience from A to C, whatever it might be. It's like, ah, they, my audience will really appreciate that. That's, that's a gift. So more, more about them than about what, you. I and see what the outcome is going to be once they experience you. Yes. So outcome focused messaging versus resume focused uh, communications. So, okay. So you go from, all right, uh, you target certain places that you might want to speak you get the contact information and then you you reach out right how how many places do you, have you found just in your experiences how many let's say in a given week how many outreaches unique outreaches does it take to maybe get even just a little response that might turn into an actual engagement you know, that's, that's really a hard question. Um, but I will say that you have to be consistent because people are booking three, six months out. And, <clears throat> um, you know, you, you need to have a steady stream of outgoing pitches. I can't give you the exact number, but it needs to be consistent. That's the most important thing. Not oh, I'll get to this and I'll, you know, eventually get it done. Um, you have to really put concentrated time, put a plan together and make it happen. Yes. Okay. So there's that beautiful blend between quality over quantity, right? You don't want to just blast it out and, and then it becomes really obvious, not personal at all. You have no idea really what the event is about or what the show is about. You're just throwing it out there. Those are probably the first to fall flat, right? So be, be personal. 
Yeah. And targeted. Um, but that steady consistency, that's really, if you're going to, if you, if you're going to have a speaking business, treat it like a business schedule that outreach time. Cause it's not going to be, oh, I sent out 50 outreaches on Monday. I can sit back. I think that, that whole, that whole story about the tortoise and, and the hare, right. Is so apropos here that consistent, maybe daily hour, whatever it might be of outreach, follow-up, outreach, follow-up is going to be way more powerful than once a month you send out a blast and then you just kind of sit back. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to address something that you said. And you said that if you're a speaker. Now, I think a lot of people that are leaders don't necessarily think of themselves as speakers. They are business people that are using speaking to fill their business. Yes. So there are some people, obviously, who just want to speak and make a living speaking. But the majority of people that are using speaking today are people who are using business and using speaking and on all podcast, all, all every every platform, podcasts, summits, you know, meetings, conferences, TEDx's. They're using it as a means to grow their business. So if you don't think of yourself as a speaker, this still applies to you. If you're if speaking is the path to way to fill your client list, then everything that we've said here is applicable. Such an important insight. I'm really glad you highlighted that, Jackie. Right, the power of our voice is way more powerful than any marketing budget or any kind of social media post, whatever it might be. Um, when people really get to hear it from us and experience it from us, from our voice, whether it's in video form or on location, whatever it might be, that is where the real connections are made. You might pique some interest in some of these other ways that people have you do. But I say, even if you have an unlimited marketing budget, don't underestimate the power of your voice to out, to outperform any amount of ads, right? If you don't have a marketing budget, here it is right here, your voice, get yourself out there. And that's really what's going to grow your, um, your company, your business, your brand, take you to that next level that you're looking for. Yes, that was really, I'm so glad you brought that up. And then, um, talk a little bit about that initial question with regards to when you are making those connections that are more cold, maybe through email, a cold call, hopefully an introduction or, uh, or even a DM, what is the best approach and what's the worst approach? <laughs> well, the, 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 the warmest is when you have something in common with that booger. You know the same person, you can get an introduction, you belong to the same organizations, same church, you live in the same city, you went to the same college. I call that common touch points. If you can institute that in your letter, it's going to bridge the gap right away. That's the fastest way to get over that. that. And if not, then there are a couple things. One, have testimonials from other people that have brought you in to speak, that speak to how effective you were for their audience. That immediately gets them past, I don't know this person, Do, are they any good? Have they, you know, have they uh, any experience? But here's a real key to that. The, the quote that you use has to be one that's at the level of the person you're approaching or above. If it's mm. an organization that's below, like you're trying to get into the corporate world and you're giving them a, a, a spiritual center, that is not going to work. It needs to be something that they would respect and that they could see as as equal to them or above. And once you can use a quote, that also helps get over that, oh, my God, this is a new person and I don't know who the hell they are. That's golden. That's actually golden. And those testimonials I have found are far more powerful on the spot or if it's virtual right after, not a week from now, you not a week after because that excitement and the nuances of what they got out of your presence, it just fades away with all the other things in their, 
day to day. So, and you want, and you want he, the testimonial from somebody who's booked you, not somebody who's heard you. That's secondary. You really need it from somebody who's booked you. So you yes. need to hit them either at the event or in the day after. Yeah, both. Right. But you're right. I think we underestimate how powerful it is from the actual host. Uh, we're more concerned with getting those those reactions from the audience that we forget to approach the host or the secondary second in command who happen to be there in the room when you were speaking. So, so important. So obviously effective outreach begins with effective leads and you have designed your company to make sure that people have current great kind of vetted leads in a lot of different areas. So talk a little bit about speaker tunity, speaker tunity and what you offer. Speaker tunity is a speaker and leader resource company. We help leaders get booked faster, easier, and in more places. What we've done is we've gone out and curated, researched and curated various leads so that you don't have to do the work yourself. Now you can get with Antoniette and, ha and her program, but if you're gonna do it yourself, we have the perfect system. We will give you 40 podcasts a month that are either lifestyle or B2B. We'll give you all the virtual summits that are looking for guest presenters and giveaways that are looking for partners so that you can grow your opt-in list to qualify for the summits that have minimum list size. We'll give you um, a smorgasbord of leads all over North America. Um, and that really is for a transformational leader. We'll give you... Con uh, 4,500 conferences that have issued calls for speakers right now in 20 categories in 40 different subcategories. So you can get exactly the leads that you want and apply to them, fill in those forms and apply. Um, we will give you regional directories. Uh, if you live in the United States or Canada, we have 75 regional directories with just cover the meetings in your market, whether that's business, philanthropic and service, um, you know, personal special interest or spiritual. And then we repurposed all that that information if you just want your niche. So if you just want all the women's business meetings across North America, all the parenting meetings, or all the lawyers meetings, we've got 60 different niches for you will give you meetings. Then if you want TEDx, we have the world's biggest TEDx directory. 1,400 divided in the US, Canada, and then all the rest of the world will tell you the language, will tell you uh, what the themes are so that you can decide which ones you want to apply to and not have to wade through that massive website. You're going to see it all easily accessible to you. So we're just simply making it simple. <laughs> so you yes. can get your leads um, and, um, and, and put yourself in front of those audiences. I would go a step further, just knowing what I do and what me and my team do. We mostly try to focus on those paid engagements, right? Those paid opportunities. So if you look at your bureau, your agent, your agency, sometimes it's multiple as partners versus do it for you. They're out there doing their work. They're getting their leads in a whole different sphere, right? They've got a different set of relationships that they're working on. You should also ride alongside if you're really serious about your speaking career and you want to elevate and, and go to the next level and you don't want to wait around, right? You, uh, you're also putting in your el elbow grease. And so you can short track that by or fast track that by getting leads that have been found for you in the space and niche that you want. So that just kind of cuts out that amount of time. So your agent, agency or bureau, they're doing their work on your behalf, but that you're not just sitting back. You're really also in partnership with them doing your own work. Those are the speakers, the ones that I see doing that go further, faster, for longer, right? Their longevity far outweighs those speakers who might be just kind of sitting on the bench or waiting for those opportunities to come to them. I have one speaker that I've worked with. She was on 36 different bureaus and agencies and still every single day she had an hour scheduled in her morning has a uh, present tense where she continues to, to reach out. So, and, and that's despite the 36 agencies and bureaus that are also working on her behalf. So nobody's going to take, 
as much as they love you, as much as they want to promote you, as much as they want that commission, whatever it might be, you are going to always be your best voice, your best marketer. And then just keep in mind, these bureaus and agencies have multiple speakers that they're promoting. You're promoting you. And that's, that's really a big part of even our program is we, you can, you can be given a fish and have a meal (laughs) with that verse, or you can, uh, learn how to fish and and never go without a meal. So uh, yes, have your, have some done for you always going, but never underestimate the, the power of the DIY or the done with you as well. And, and this and resource say, that, go ahead. And I would say that, you know, one of the things about that we bring to the table is it's incredibly affordable and we have training programs. If you're going to learn how to write your own pitch, or if you're going to learn how to write your own radio podcast pitch, you you know you're we're not stranding you um, without any guidance. You have the ability to um, you know really understand and deliver the tools that you need to get booked. Um, but as I say, you know you're not going to break the bank with anything that we offer. Yeah, we do have a link in the show notes where if you are interested. Um, we have a little bit of an affiliation with um, Jackie because we trust her. We know she's been in the industry for quite a while and um, and she's got a great system going on. So make sure to look for that link in the show notes. So as we close, Jackie, I would love to have you help this this audience that's with us today do one tangible thing to get their voices out there in a bigger way. This is Speak Pact. We are in a pact together to make the greatest impact that we can. We can really only do that if we build this as a, as a business and it's sustainable. So just from your years of experience, what is the one main thing that a speaker can do to get to just that very next level that they want to get to? Well, you alluded to it in the last com- item that you mentioned. And that is actually to book three hours a week in your calendar. Because if you think it's going to happen and you're going to get to it, I guarantee you it won't happen. But if you book three hours a week in your calendar, as if you were making an appointment with somebody else and devote that to your booking, whether that's you doing it, whether that's you supervising somebody on your team, a VA, whether it's you've hired out, whatever you're doing, you have to take charge of that time. And I say, if you can't do the time, you can't earn the dime. Ooh, if you can't do the time, you can't do the dime. Can't earn the dime. If you can't do the time, you can't earn the dime. Let's make it wrap. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, you've brought a lot of truly valuable insights today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us your time, Jackie. You are definitely a treasure in the industry, and I'm honored that you spent time time with us today. I am delighted to be here, and um, you know, I am a big supporter of Antonia and 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 what she does with her community. Um, and we are, you know, perfectly complementary to each other. And I honor the work that you do, Antonia. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And for all of our listeners, please give us those five stars. They go so far in helping other people find these shows and really elevate their careers uh, with the power of their voice. Definitely subscribe, give us the likes, do all those, those wonderful ways to say thank you to us for Jackie and Mai's time today. We so appreciate you being with us. So for now, ciao, ciao. Thank you for listening to the Speak Pact podcast. To become a recommended speaker of Antoniet's WPC Speaker Agency, or you are a host or planner looking for a dynamic expert in optimized performance, Antoniet would like to personally meet with you. Secure a time with her at speakerbooker.com. Again, that is speakerbooker.com. It all begins with a vision, a voice, and a pact to impact. Join the Speak Pact movement by joining our new private Facebook group at the link in our show notes. Find us on nearly every social media platform at One Antoniet. That's number one, A-N-T-O-N-I-E-T-T-E, 
or simply hashtag SpeakPact.